Cheers, and welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm your host today, Matt, along with John, Mike, Christy, and Ian. And today we're going to be talking about uh, vol property in a voluntary society. It should be interesting, but first, like always, we're going to start off with beer. Uh, and tonight I'm drinking uh, Vanilla Porter by Breckenridge Brewery. It uh, looks like oh, in Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, yeah. Breckenridge, I went skiing there. All the way from Colorado, and it's pretty damn good if you ask right. me. Right. I'd have to agree with you there, Mike. Uh, smells good, tastes good. I, I didn't see a percentage on here, uh, but. Da -da 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 -da. I, I, yeah, 4.7, so not too high, but still good. 4.7, solid. Solid. Better than a Budweiser. Ah, yes. Mm. Uh, Budweiser. Mm. That's mm. nasty. Yeah. Don't send us any advertising dollars. Yeah. We don't want your money. No. Oh. That, <laughs> don't sue us either. <laughs> Buttery tasting and made with rice. I'll try to ignore, uh, try to avoid tasty. that if I can. Budweiser, but yeah, definitely. What was before. that? Uh, buttery it, tasting. What? It tastes like Bud. It tastes a little buttery tasting, and Budweiser is made with rice, and so it just oh, got a weird. That. Uh, oh. uh, that's why. Mm. Oh, I've had rice beer that's good, but the way they do it with that, they they mix it with rice and the grain to save a couple cents, and mm. yeah, bullshit. Yeah. Okay. Not really the best beer. And one you're ever getting money ever again. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't drink it. John? My fermented beverage of choice is, tonight is uh, Kavita Mango Coconut Probiotic Drink. I just that tried that the other day. Really good. I yeah, enjoy. it's very, very mm -hmm. good. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Christy? Pinot Noir. You know, wine. Yeah, wine. that's the way. Well, it's, it's, and we can get wine. We can get wine. Dollars too. So. Well, I mean, we've got wineries all around. Too, so. Anybody who wants anybody to send us money, right. we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you send us a check for five dollars, right. we will we're gladly bottles. cash we're it. Thank you very much. Yes, our bottles. Bitcoin, yeah. or whatever. We will take bottles too. Yeah. Actually, yeah, we we would prefer Bitcoin yeah. or, or some or other send us alternative. Your, yes, send us your beer, wine, kombucha. Yeah. we'll rate it on the show. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> there you there go. are so many viewers. Look at the count. <laughs> <laughs> And since this is not FCC regulated, you can send us whatever you want and it will not be a problem. Ooh, yes. 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 Uh, there's no PO of problems here. <laughs> Ian? I'm drinking water tonight so oh, I can drink man. plenty of beer tomorrow. There you go. Uh, and tomorrow I've got quite the lineup. Ooh. I've got a who's who of San Diego breweries. I've got a oh, wow. Alpine Beer Company growlers. Oh, where are they? Uh, Julie? There's an Alpine or? beer. They're, of Alpine. 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 Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. some of the They're best beer in San today. Diego. Yeah. Like, uh, I've got Nelson. Which is their rye IPA, seven oh, percent, nice. but nice. sixty IBUs. All I believe, all Nelson. It's fantastic. Mm. Uh, I got Modern Times ready to go, and then Society, and I'm going to enjoy every Very drop of it. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a good yeah, lineup. Yeah, it does. Very delicious. Local breweries are where it's at because they just do a better job. There's no way around that. Your local brewery will always do a better job. And your palate gets trained to your local breweries. Mm -hmm. Like when I came to San Diego, I couldn't stand IPAs. Now it's the only thing I can drink. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's funny. Wow. That's interesting. It's got to be bitter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's, like it's gotten to the point with me where if, like, if I drink uh, specifically, and I'd, again, talk about not getting money ever, specifically if I drink Budweiser, my stomach reacts really badly to it. Like seriously, I'll have like one or two of them and my stomach is just like, what is it? Are you it? a beer like, snob? I, I guess like my body's telling me I am. I don't like to think of myself as a beer snob, but if I have like Budweiser, my stomach's like, what is and this? This is weird. It's highly carbonated yeah. Pilsner piss. Like it's <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, yeah I mean, it is. So, you yeah. can't go back. Once you have you can't good, go back. you can't go back. Yeah. You just can't. We're, San Diego is now beer snobbery. It really is. We are beer San snobs. San Diego is. There, we're there beer snobs beer because snobs. we like <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> there is. We need the property to grow the hop. Yeah. There, there is grow. more breweries <laughs> per capita in San Diego County than almost any other yeah. place in the country. That's very cool. So, which is really yeah. kind of interesting for, for a very small location. Really, yeah. it's it's there's an amazing amount of breweries around. Yeah. But uh, so the the topic of tonight is. <laughs> Property. All right, uh, yeah, property, property. But but to get into a little bit more of a microcosm of it, this is this is a very interesting problem, which is probably at one point or another going to occur, uh, occur in the future of this planet. So I'm saying specifically this planet because it's going to go with my argument later on. But um, 
So what happens, we're assuming here that at one point there will be no government and we will have a voluntary society. So what happens when you have all the property owned? That everything that, that can be owned as physical land on this planet is owned, you're obviously going to have people that own a lot more property than others. So what do we do when it comes to a situation where like, let's throw this out there. You've got some guy who has millions or billions of dollars. He lives in New York City. And let's say he owns, which when it comes to that part of the country is a pittance. But let's say in Utah, he owns 10,000 acres. But he never goes there. He never, he never contacts anybody there. He simply owns this, let's call it a square of land in Utah. Uh, what happens over time if he never maintains it, never contacts anybody, never has somebody overseeing the property? At one point, uh, I mean, this is kind of like the way I look at it. Well, okay, so what, what point does it become somebody else's or is it always his as long as nobody has ever taken a claim against it you know what i'm saying like well i think what was brought up earlier is that the property only exists because the state keeps track of it right the state is it i'll just i'm not sure if that's the whole well, thing. I, I would i would like to say that i hope that it's through conversations like this that voluntarism doesn't evolve to a place where someone can accumulate that much, either capital or land or whatever. And but let's just go with the scenario, mm -hmm. right? And uh, um, I'm not going to say that I'm highly conversant in this, but I would say that we could, for you know, look for uh, refining our language and 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 go down the avenue. Let's say property. Uh, did make a distinction between property and possession. Mm -hmm. And a possession could be your toothbrush, your laptop, your car, all these things that are for personal use. It doesn't, they aren't like uh, the machines of production, if you will. Mm -hmm. And those things that we typically identify as needing the state to facilitate uh, as being property, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. So like the big cap, big machines in, in industry, the big banks that are part of the whole finance mechanism, the state which uh, is responsible for locking down information, if you will, through patent and, mm. and intellectual property or patent and copyright. Um, so we could go down that road and, and, and let's clear up our definitions on what is property, vice, of possession, you know. Mm. But, well, you know. Uh, if I were to buy a piece of property, I would think that's my possession, you know, like because I, I bought I bought these coordinates on a map, and regardless of whether I did any work on it, that's my property. You know, I I don't. I, where is well, it said that if I don't that do it serves it? in this scenario? Does so, it matter? Well, this guy buys this land. Is he buying it as an investment? Is it somehow tied up into making more money, using money to make money? Therefore, it becomes capital. Um, and there in he makes money maybe by not developing it, not by using it through subsidies or something like that. Like in this scenario, when this guy has, he was a guy, right? Has this land. Mm -hmm. uh, why does he have this land? Guy, guy or gal, it doesn't matter. Well, just, I just, 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 you just you know, said you know, yeah. you know? I'm not worried about it, don't worry. They just don't want to be a Christy, like the only girl on the thing, like, eh, 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 you know, like that sort of thing. No, no, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I, I would hope that there's some kind of social pressures that would mm -hmm. prevent someone from becoming a land baron, if you will, you know. But that being said, uh, if you uh, have 1,200 acres because you need X amount of acre per cattle for healthy beef, then right. that's obviously a useful and productive use of land as opposed to someone who's I, speculating I and sitting ethics, on uh, though, sitting on. Ethics versus something I paid money for. If I pay money for a plot of land that has certain coordinates, you know, based on the right. coordinates, we, we, and some, see, I think it is who's going to keep track of that. That's really, without a state, who's going to keep track of that? Well, I, I if think we have a system. I think that's... Buy that land from who, bought, who bought the land before and so on? Because so they gave money. Who licensed that? If that so who, bought the, who, who, bought, who, 
Well, okay, but then we go to the chicken and egg. Who, so, who? Where did it start? I think so you're more of a steward on the land than you are. Well, I can yeah. I can yeah. buy stewards on the land. Okay. Yeah. I can. So I, I think it's more about who is actually uh, controlling the land, who is actually using it, who who is interacting with it. Um, so you, okay, so here's a scenario. I buy this land. Let's say it's ten thousand acres. From who? No, uh, from somebody. Yeah. From somebody who ha who who we all agree to this body who had a legitimate who, had who a, was legitimately uh, who legitimately owned, owned it, it right right okay so so but then I but I did nothing with it I just did absolutely nothing with it okay so you're saying somebody could come there and just take it away from me I mean maybe I was saving it for my grandkids and I want to you know what if you're uh, but I wasn't fire on it and burned because it wasn't cleared properly because it wasn't taken then care. I would be responsible it for it steward, then I'm ready. responsible for it so you'd I have, have to somehow insurance. you'd have to yeah. somehow tend the land so yeah I would I yes I'd be responsible for well, there's, I, there's something to John's distinction that I think we're losing. And, I mean, for you to say that this is my land and I need, you need to respect these coordinates, that is an ethical question also. It, it is. Or you're not I, saying right. that this isn't ethical. That is. It is. But what John is saying, what is the purpose of the land? A toothbrush is a possession that has a purpose to mm -hmm. clean your teeth. But what say, let's say I have, have no say, purpose. But, what I have no purpose but for But the it. point is, people need land to survive. Right. They I need agree. to grow food. They need spaces to live and have shelters. But what right. if I rented I, it? I'd what if I, I rented it to people? I'd they like couldn't to add, afford... Yeah. I'd like to add, Chrissy, too. It's like, if... At least for me, I would like to... At least have the conversations that help volunteerism evolve to something that's sustainable. Right. If we come to a place where we are engaging... Where people are near universally engaging nonviolently in a voluntary method, not violently, and uh, the population grows because their quality of life is growing, right. because people are no longer killing each other, you know, near universally. Uh, it, there's that still the 2% of like biologically wrong-wired people that right. will still commit acts of violence, but if we can get to a point where near universally violence is a thing of the past, uh, then we would look at uh, our numbers growing, right, and we'd have to take into consideration self-policing of our own population, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm not saying to, whatever that looks like, mm -hmm. you know, without, you know, uh, I think that a rational, reasonable populace would say it's, it's not best to just keep spitting babies out until we can't feed ourselves anymore, right? And uh, so, anyway, you're getting us to a place where, uh, yeah, how can we still, uh, Go I mean, on morally, if all of the if all the if all the arable land okay, is Okay, so morally, up. morally, if I was the owner of that ten thousand square feet, I did nothing to it. That would be unethical, I think. And that's where, we, to me, I'd have to go for me. I'd have to be. It would be unethical for me to just do nothing with it. You know, I, for, I'm just a. But there's a question here, though, and this is when you have this type of ownership where you have people that own vast stretches of land that other people need to survive, mm -hmm. it changes how that person that owns the land understands and sees that land. It's not potentially something, well, this is how a lot of philosophers and sociologists would view this. It's no longer something that is used to support life. It is an investment. Mm -hmm. And their interest becomes tied to the investment of that land. So the decisions that they make become based <laughs> on profit. Thank you, and yeah, we're divorced from nature, right? Yeah. So that's exactly what I want. You said it so well, but basically, yeah, we become divorced from nature. But I, is profit bad? I mean, we can I see guess this it, though, is it bad to own land so, and no, it's, it's I not. Don't I don't. I don't think that's the essential argument, in my opinion. At least, like from my getting from like what what, what John and Ian is saying is that I don't think that owning a lot of land in itself is bad. I, that, I don't think that's the argument they're saying. It, it's it's simply the it, correct me if I'm wrong, but the motivation for owning or... or, or, it's or, or it's, it changes you. So my thing is, I'm not going to comment on whether it's right or wrong to own something, but I will say to own something that can contribute or perpetuate the suffering of others mm -hmm. and for you to sustain that type of ownership because you're not able to see the people who are suffering or your relationship right. to them is ethics. a problem. I think it's ethics. Well, I mean, but that's this an ethical is, thing. Everything is yeah. ethical and right. moral okay. at this point. Though. So, right. yeah. so here's an example I think would help clarify this. So I, I teach at a university and I teach my students about social theory. One of the examples I give them when I start talking about Karl Marx is he has this concept called the fetishism of commodities. It's when we start to see the commodities as taking on a life of their own and kind of dictating what we do. Right? Okay. It's, it's not a real thing. 
But really, what we're not seeing when we start to view commodities in that way is the other people involved in these situations. So from my personal experience, this is the scenario I like to present. So I was in Chicago last summer, and I was just in the city, you know, you just see all the normal things you would see in a big urban center. Mm. You drive 20 minutes out of Chicago, and you see cornfields mm. where corn is rotting on the mm. stalk because it will not be harvested. And so you have to think about this. Why won't mm -hmm. it be harvested though? Well, this is what we're getting to. Yeah. So the, the thought exercise is, there are hungry people in Chicago, 20 minutes away from this farm. Mm -hmm. But the farmer, it makes more sense for them to not harvest this corn and to let it rot on the stalk. Why is this reasonable for the farmer to do this? And that's the it's thought the experiment. state, though, isn't it? The state? It because does, the state, it, they it give them... It is subsidized. There is a it becomes down, subsidized. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's because it wasn't subsidized. But from the farmer's perspective... It's the market so, value, right? The so. corn is not about sustaining life. It, the corn is about profit. But, so is, I, okay, but I, is that so because I, the state gets involved in it? So if I'd the like state to, wasn't involved, would it really? they wouldn't have those... I'd like to point out how, how involved the state is also in uh, real estate when we're talking real estate yeah. and actual transfer of ownership of properties and not to mention the banks. The banks are completely in, entrenched in this too. So when you have those two in the middle, you, you, you don't have people trading property owner to owner. You're not, you're, you have a middleman in there. So you don't, you don't see the actual the person. Yeah. The right. person who's been yeah. running it and then yeah. When you, when you do take care of something for a long time and you want to transfer the ownership, you, you don't want it to go somewhere. You don't want it to crash. And, I mean, sometimes there's bad intent, but it's most likely that person's going to have more of an interest in helping the people in the community that he's been working with than a bank or the government right. uh, handling the There loans. are some bad people, but yes, in the majority, yes. Person to person is much better than a... Yes, I, I think the banks uh, and the government being in control of property and the uh, distribution of property is, is one of the major issues we have right now with actual concept of how you become an owner of something because they, they can, I mean, they can just print up the wealth whenever they want and really manipulate who does get a house, who does not, who gets a loan, who doesn't, all that. So, so I think so, it'd be different. So let's say I have this 10,000 acres and I did nothing with it. What would you do in the scenario of I mean, the other thing is, well, who would you Tar and feather you and I burn know. you at the stake. Well, that's what we do. Well, you, no, who, that's not what we're going to do. That's no, it's thing. not that bad. It's just like... It's well, that's a, the other no. thing, though. Who, who, sold the, who sold it to you? Like, somebody would have had to sell that to you. And it, it, if I'm selling something to somebody, I, I'm going to want to make sure, hey, they're actually doing something good with it. Really? Gonna, I mean... Not me. If I, I sold my land, I, it's like I sold it. I, that's just me. I well, just sold that, my home thing, in maybe. Georgia. I don't know what they're going to do with that home. I sold my home. Maybe I'm bad and wrong. But isn't it's isn't that isn't person, that but... what what uh, using you know your business relationship with other people, you know the volunteering doing doing business with somebody, choosing people that you think are in your interest. To I do have business absolutely with. no idea who these people were who bought the home. So, but they, don't you they think they paid money and now I paid off my mortgage? And so, so maybe and in a case a like that, it's not it possessions of property are going to have a different value. I mean, really, going to have a different value too. And, and Christy was okay with simply the concept of somebody giving her money. And it's also for property, a, a house, house. And, and, and she she was fine. It's also, suburbia. It's not like it's. It's a, also it's also something that yeah it's it's a house something right. somebody's going to be living right. in most likely. I knew yes. Right. You you, you, yeah. you probably have a general idea of what's going to be happening. I, I yes. But if if I can be really simplistic when it comes to. This is super simplistic, and we can get back to the, to the, to the heavier concepts involved. But, so, uh, let's say, go back to what the original premise is, because I think we kind of agreed upon it for the most part, oh, yeah. is, dude, New York City, thousands of miles away, owns 10,000 acres in Utah. It would be super smart for that guy to have somebody stewarding that property. He pays the dude to live there and maintain the property. I think that's something we can all agree upon. That would be probably the smartest thing to do. He's paying somebody to maintain the property to say, like, no, this is this is still something that I, I, I care about. I'm maintaining it. I'm paying you to do it. That person has some sort of vested interest in the property. Going from that, that's where we get into the nitty-gritty detail of it. Well, so what if that guy doesn't send somebody to maintain the property? What if he doesn't... Well, there's a lot of you, what, 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 there. You know, there what, are. Yeah, what if he... What if that guy puts up some barbed wire yeah. fence 
It sits there for. What would we do as it, a voluntary it, site? It, it sits there for thirty years. Yeah. Nobody ever sees the owner of that property, and it just sits there. At some point or another, now I'm not saying that that this is right or wrong. Here's a rare instance of me being really pragmatic, uh, pragmatic about a statement. Mm -hmm. That at one point or another, if somebody puts up a bunch of barbed wire and, and T posts in the ground, after a couple years, people are going to start going into that property. It's just yeah, what's going to happen. Well, happy, yeah. Whether it's yeah. moral or immoral, yeah. that's what people are going to yeah. do. They're just gonna be like, Spires, oh, I've never yeah. seen anybody on that property. Sure, there's a bunch of barbed wire around it, but I've never seen a soul there. And so that's what's going to happen. They're doing it now with gorilla gardens and things like that, too. No, right? yeah, I mean, yeah. well, you, right. you, you're, yeah. you're seeing that happen in Detroit. Right. The right. whole city yeah. is, is, or what used to Which, be the so, city. If I mean, but be, if I were you know, a landowner, I would be okay with that. You know, right. it's like, so, I mean, yeah. they're not, they're just using it. I'm not doing anything with it. They're using it. They're putting their own water into it. I'm not having, to me, that would be cool. Morally, see, I think it's a moral and ethical thing. Well, it's it, like it if you're is, doing bad things, like keeping the destroying the corn. That's a moral and ethical. Well, that's that, bad. That's that's, that's, what I, that's what you I know? raised the initial question is our point where I do think it's a moral and ethical yeah. issue, and that we need to consider it because if our intent is to is to philosophically advance society, right, and, and we want it to be sustainable, I think these are issues that we need to address. That we need mm -hmm. to yeah, acknowledge, yeah, right? And I, and I'm I can see technology now that can enable us to handle these complex issues you know so net social networking if it becomes for instance uh, socially taboo to to be a land baron for lack of better reasons mm -hmm. there's plenty of ways to non-violently uh, network and and ding somebody you know what I mean you know you can you can ding Tyson farms now if you, if you don't like the way they do their chicken and you know, or treat the chickens and whatnot, we've gotten to a point where uh, we can start dinging them through uh, ostracizing and stuff like this. We're not, you don't see it widespread right now, but I mean, the technologies are emerging that we can do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't necessarily need to uh, lobby politicians or whatever to make a new law or to create a new policy. We, the people, can start owning it. But would it people get violent against people? That's what I worry about. You know, it's like, what are they going to do? Use force to do something to this landowner? I don't know. What? I just don't know. I definitely couldn't advocate any use of force right. to somebody. And, yeah. I, and but, I don't, but I don't I, think, I think anybody think, here could, but... I think another thing, though, is yeah. if, if someone isn't uh, like on a property maintaining it or anything and, and never does go there or send anybody right. there, they wouldn't even know if someone had... Uh, used that property or was continuing to use it. But let's say I come back after I have this 10,000 acres, I'm not using it, but I really wanted it for yeah, my so prodigy, you know. Something my, happened. So, some, yeah, and then yeah, I they did, and a, I went back, a, and I'm like, oh my God. Like, yeah, what, what, there'd be like, a few issues. Number one, did that person even know you owned it? Nobody was well, doing that's, anything that's possible. I try to I try to use my words first, you know, really, as yeah. an adult, and, and try to work with them. Yeah, I like, mean, like I, if yeah. they didn't know, yeah. that then... right. Hey, hey, maybe now this person could work out a business deal with you and yeah. you could both be happy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Would you be able to come to agreement? Like, I'm, I, I, I've thought about that quite a bit, that exact same situation, where there, there's a chunk of property not maintained. Somebody decides to homestead it, and the, the legal term for that is not called... Um, um, what's, what's the word for it's not called squatting the actual legal term is called adverse possession you know, look that one up that's a weird one but um, so so somebody goes on that property decides they're going to build a house on it they've never seen anybody approach the property they've never seen anything like that they saw a barbed wire fence but it's rusted it's, it's not kept they don't know so they built a house on it some guy comes up says no this is my property you're doing something you haven't been allowed to do on my property. I've never seen you. I don't know who you are. Why are you here? Well, this is my property. I'm claiming it is. They, let's say they pull out a deed. No, this is my property. Okay. Well, so at this point, you you have a, you have a conflict of interest. You have a guy who has his property, who wants it the exact same way he left it, which, if he doesn't maintain it, there's no way it was the exact same way he left it. It, that will never happen. If you have a property, own it, 
and you never may, and you never approach it, never touch it, it will not be the exact same way you yes, left it. Yes, but I wouldn't expect a house to be on. Okay, but all. so let's just say there was. <laughs> okay, so I mean, worst case scenario, somebody else straight up homesteaded the thing, put up a house, and lives there. It would probably be in the owner's best interest, to in his best them. interest, to ha to have some sort of negotiation with him. And again, that's what I'm saying. Like a volunteer it society, would. this this you shit can it, work yeah, out. It, could. it just it, you just have to think a little bit more about it. Yeah. So that that's a bad situation. Somebody has has homesteaded your property, which you have not maintained, which is your problem. That's your fault. You didn't maintain the property. And you didn't. You didn't protect it either. You didn't. You didn't. Yeah. yeah you right. put up some right. some tipos yeah. and barbed wire, and you didn't approach it for thirty years, and somebody right. else built a house on it. So you didn't maintain it. That guy knew it was somebody's property at one point or another because he could see rusted barbed wire and T-posts, but saw that nobody ever approached it, decided, well, okay, fine, I'd like to put up a house and this is available land. And so they're both in the wrong, so it would be equitable for both of them to say, like, okay, well, say, let's say from property owner's perspective, you have this land that you're on your, excuse me, you're homesteading in this land that I own. You're maintaining it because you build a house there. You have a vested interest in keeping this property safe from other people. How about this? You stay here, and I'm just not going to charge you rent for it. There's a good chance that the guy who's built the house on there is going to agree to that. He's going to be like, oh, so I can still stay here exactly as I was before? Yep. So here's a scenario. Okay. And I'm going future into that. Okay, cool. Is people start seeing people doing that, mm -hmm. and they're going to start doing that to all the land. And I'm not saying that that's bad. What people will do is just not buy land anymore. It's like they'll just, mm -hmm. which maybe that's what we want. We want a place where people aren't buying I, 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 land. I don't, I don't see it as a situation yeah, where nobody's going to be buying, buying land anymore. But if you're not, well, if you can't, you know, if you're no, not if maintaining because, the property at one point or another, that's what is going to happen. People are just right. going to do that. They're going to say, oh, that guy hasn't touched... I, I mean, you know, my grandpa told me that that guy hasn't touched that property. Yeah. And okay. I'm, you know, 25. So if you can't, if you can't, there's nothing... So I'm saying if there's no state okay. to right. enforce property, it may just disappear anyways. I mean, the land, it may over... Well, I'm not, maybe not in our lifetime, but over time, if there's no state to enforce it, it may just become nilly-nilly, you know? It may. I don't know. I just I'm looking at if think, this were to happen often, people land. would say people would say, well, why? I'm it, just going to go on this land. There's nobody on there, and there nobody's going to do anything. And so we have lots of people in cities that would love to live out in the boonies, you know, and have a piece of property for their family, oh. you know. And I just I'm not saying it's bad. I'm we're back on the air. Uh, we had a little technical difficulty there, but we are back. Uh, and we were, I think somebody knew. I don't know. Christy, we were, you're, you're saying, saying about something about. Robot sex? I think sex? we're pretty much wrapping it up. Yeah. Here. <laughs> but no, I mean, I don't think we've gotten to robot sex yet. Oh, but, yeah. oh, but, but, yeah, but, yeah. If it, but if we're going to go into right. robot sex, which you. Damn it, we'll sorry. get there eventually. <laughs> we'll eventually be able to talk about robot sex. Apparently, we, this is the end of it again, and we haven't gotten to talk about robot sex. We don't, wait, we talked about chocolate robots today, though. We did talk. So do you, do you think yes. that chocolate could possibly simulate love to Ooh. to AI? Oh. I know it makes and me feel really freaking good. Have something to do with robots. <laughs> and so, so I guess going with with the topic a little bit today is that if you were to wander upon a cabin in the woods upon a property that which you could not see was maintained, and there was an android like you know slumped over in this cabin in the woods that was obviously not maintained. If you were to somehow bring this android back to life, would, yeah. would you be allowed to That's, have sex with it yes. in an ethical sense? As long as... If it's sentient, it has yes. to be... It has, has to, to agree to consent it. To yeah, it. It does totally have to yes. consent to it. That's, yes. that's, then does it, that's the important part even, we're talking about. Is, is there consent. a question about How it? How do you identify it? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, do we have time to talk about this, or are oh, we done? Man. No, I, I think, think we're, we're going to have to cover this during our like, yeah. robot sex episode. Yeah. Christ. The, the soon to come robot sex episode, yes. yes soon. Next, watch the next one. Yeah, yeah watch, watch the, the next, next one. one. It might be the It might be the robot, be the robot sex episode. <laughs> Maybe. Cheers. Have a good night. Peace. Have a good weekend. Good night.